So we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to start with T.D. Jakes because he's been around for a long time. And so let's check out this clip. I have been ministering the gospel for 45 years. Come September, it'll be 46 years that I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's got the fish on reserve. They're waiting on you. The money's not going to be a problem. The buildings are not going to be a problem. The employees are not going to be a problem. God's got everything you need waiting on you. Not in multitudes of fish. That is great. That is wonderful. That is commerce. That is economy. That is prosperity. That is equity. That is resources. That is Peter's business exploding beyond human comprehension and filling his boat and filling his partner's boat until everything associated with Peter got blessed because Peter had an encounter with Jesus. And God says, go into the deep, go into the deep. Stop telling me about the last two years. I don't care nothing about that. I want to tell you about the next two years. God said, launch into the deep. Launch into the deep. Just when they think you're going to wash your nets. Just when they think you're going to quit. Just when they think you're going to stay at Burger King. Launch out! Who am I preaching to? Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm getting ready to launch. If you can't launch, you can't go. If you can't launch, you can't go. So. Uh, that 46 years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what we get. God has the fish on reserve and he's making it. He's talking about the miracle, of course, that Jesus uh, made the fish manifest for Peter. But this is not the gospel. This, this, this manifestation of quote unquote prosperity is basically what it is, is not the gospel. But yet for 46 years, he's been preaching the gospel. What gospel has he been preaching? He says the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he, he mentions Jesus as a footnote. Oh, Peter had an encounter with Jesus. Just throw Jesus in there. As long as you throw him in there, it's the gospel. No. No. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Thomas Carlisle, how you doing? God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Un unacceptable. I'm sorry. That's un an unacceptable presentation of the gospel. And this, this is why we're doing this. I'm, 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 I'm exposing this because we need to know what the real gospel is. Be why? Because Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Why is he not ashamed? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Paul understood the power of the gospel, and so should we. He understood that it was that gospel that was going to free people. He understood it. Why? Because he saw it with his own eyes. He was a, 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 an eyewitness uh, uh, to See what happens when you preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, which is why I'm talking about it right now. Okay, so let's let's take another look. Let's take another look at, at, at a quote unquote attempt to preach the gospel in this day and age. Um, now, I don't know this brother's uh, I don't know this brother's uh, uh, name. Um, but he's part of Transformation Church, and that should tell you everything that you need to know. Right there. Transformation Church, the church that Mike Todd is the pastor of, the church that Tim Russ is a preacher at. That's all you need to know. And I'll have some clips with them later, but I, I just kind of want to brush and touch on this. So this is the kind of thing that we got out here. So we had Jakes has been preaching for 46 years, says he's been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ for 46 years, but he comes up and um, 
He's talking about fish, the manifestation of fish. In other words, the manifestation of your blessing, your financial blessing for yourself, for your business, whatever. And then we have this. You weren't made to be up in a tree. You come down because there's only one person this tree is made for. 2,000 years ago, Jesus climbed the last tree that would ever need to be climbed. And he stretched out his arms and he said, it is finished. They ain't got to climb no more trees. They don't have to perform for my love. They don't have to be a certain type of person for me to love them. Jesus climbed the tree so you would never have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... I don't even know what to think when I watch this, man. First of all, I mean, can we just talk about the elephant in the room? Dude, why you got on? Why? Dude, why the pink, man? I mean, I'm not, don't don't get me wrong. Pink is a color. You can pick whatever you want, color you want. Bleach blonde hair, pink outfit, everything on the set pink. I, I don't, I'm just not, I don't know, man. I'm just not connecting to that. No. <laughs> Jesus climbed the tree so you don't have to. That's what you find when you open the Bible? And I know I'm just taking excerpts. I know I'm just taking excerpts. But it's, it's the, the, the point is, is that the gospel? That's a poor attempt. And I, listen, 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 listen. I'm all for being illustrative, but that climbing up a ladder stuff, can we stay on the ground and can we stay in the word of God? I don't understand. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I just, I don't get it, man. Stay in the Bible. And this is another problem I have while I'm here. Anytime I see a preacher that's pacing back and forth and doing a lot of talking and he's not where his Bible is and where the notes are, red flags for me, red flags, red flags. Because now you're just going off of your own energy now. You're not in the word anymore. You want people to focus on you. I don't want people to focus on me. I want people to focus on the message. That's what we're missing here. Let's see. We've got some comments. What in God's blue ball called earth was that trash? <laughs> Brother, I don't know. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Let's see. Flatbush21, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. It says, hey, brother, God bless you, bro, and keep up the good work and good, good kingdom work. I'm trying, bro. I'm just trying to do what God's called me to do. That's what I was going to say. Pink. <laughs> so this says Thomas Carlisle. I don't, that's not the gospel. Brother Green, you're critiquing really hard. Yes. Yes, because the importance of this topic is so epically topic epically important that it needs to be stressed we have to get this right otherwise people are are going to be false converts there's a such thing as false converts the bible talks about false converts we don't want false converts we want real converts and a real convert can only be converted by the true gospel of jesus christ so so let's take another look, another look at what we got out here. And in this series, you're gonna, you guys are gonna see all the bad examples, but you're gonna see some good examples of the of the gospel too. Today's today we're spending time saying what is not the gospel. We're defining the gospel, but we're also saying what's not what is not the gospel. Okay. So if you know anything about Todd White, you already know that this dude um, is a heretic. Okay. Now, let's listen to him as he gives us his version of the gospel. People call prosperity some kind of twisted doctor. God wants you to be in good health and he wants you to prosper. 
He wants your soul to prosper. He wants the prosperous soul to hit you so much. See, because when you have a prosperous soul, money doesn't matter to you. The more you have, the more you give. I promise you. The more God gives you, the more you funnel and you just become a giver and you give and you give and you give and you give. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave. So that's what we as Christians do. We give. We give. We give. People are like, well, you're just after money. No, God's not after you. He's after you ever being had by money. Money doesn't make the world go around. Jesus does. Do you know when you become a radical giver and you become a radical, just a radical tither and a radical offerer and a person that just, that blesses people, you actually step into the Abrahamic blessing, the blessing of Abraham. People are, oh, now you're getting, now, people get attitudes with this. Get over you. I could care less what you think right now about this. I really don't. It doesn't matter to me. I love you, but you need to be free. This isn't about hoarding everything for yourself. This is about changing the world through a currency that the devil uses to manipulate. Do you know how much money is, is going through the hands of, of, of pimps and drug dealers in this world? Do you have any idea what the world does with money? What the church could do if the church knew who she was? The devil doesn't ever want you to get a revelation of finances, ever. Because if he does, he loses control of you. You read through the Old Testament. Kenneth Copeland has taught me so much. I, I, you guys can think what you want. There's people that have said, I've had partners that are partners with lifestyle. They're like, well, now that we know that you're in cahoots with this false prophet, we don't want to partner with you. I feel bad for you. I do. I don't, I don't need your partnership. It's not about that. See, you don't know that Kenneth Copeland is one of the most generous people alive on the planet. Let me just break it down for you. Do you know who Reinhard Bunke is? Do you know how many souls that they have in the kingdom right now? Over 76 million souls. Do you I, I got I to stop it, man. I got to stop it. Uh, this is definitely not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is definitely the prosperity gospel. And you see the arrogance of him. I don't care what you think right now. Like, give me your money. <laughs> what? What? And the fact that Kenneth Copeland launched this guy under the banner of the gospel is crazy. This goes to sh show you how twisted we've become when it comes to the gospel. This dude actually thinks that he's preaching the gospel. By, by saying, when you start giving, you get the Abrahamic blessing. There's no, listen, there's no doctrine about the Abrahamic blessing other than, listen, listen, there is an Abrahamic blessing. You know what it is? It's salvation by faith. That's the Abrahamic blessing. Not you're going to get all kinds of money when you give. That's basically the seed, the seed doctrine, which is, which is heretical. It's new. Nobody was preaching that 100 years ago. Anyway, let's see, let's see the comments. It says, uh, uh, Ken, Kenneth Copeland is possessed and a false prophet. I, I, I would have to agree with you, brother. It says, Kenneth preaches that we are all gods. Yes, he does. That's all you need to know. Todd White started under the ministry of Dan Moeller. Um, he then betrayed Dan and broke his heart. I did not know that. And, um, I'm just going to, I mean, I think they saw Todd White was doing some stuff that they liked, and they saw that he could attract the crowd, and I think that's why Kenneth Copeland adopted him. He's like a son to him now. 
Mm-hmm. And um, this is what he's preaching. Prosperity gospel. This is not the gospel. The gospel of prosperity is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, Jesus did not die so that you can be prosperous. In the in the in the material sense. And I don't understand how people can 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 preach that when you look at the death of the apostles who preached the gospel. They all were murdered and were poor. I'm not saying we should all be poor. That's not the point. The point is, if this gospel, this prosperity gospel was true, would it not have bear fruit from the early believers? Right? It didn't. It killed them. Preaching the true gospel killed them. <laughs> wow. Charles Edda Phelps Ortiz, appreciate you. Thank you for checking in. She says, it's so, so sad how preachers are preaching prosperity just to gain money for their selfish actions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And have been, been doing it for decades. So I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm showing these clips because I want you to see what's out here. I want you to see what's been out here and what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. Because we're defining the gospel. That's what we're doing. So I'm, I, I got one more clip to play, and then, um, and then I'm gonna continue on. So this clip is by another prosperity gospel, and the thing that you're gonna see here is. Um, he goes into the Bible, but what is, um, consistent with all of the false teachers is they are very skilled at twisting the word of God, twisting definitions. And you're going to hear him do some defining here. Um, and some of his, some of his definitions are correct. And this is another subtlety. This is another evil is that a good lie has to have some truth to it in order for people to buy it. Right. That's what false teachers use. And these false purveyors of the gospel do the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? And so we're going to listen to Creflo Dollar. And so. What you're going to hear is you're going to hear the word, but you're going to hear the word twisted when it comes to the definition of what the gospel is. Here it is. So let's begin this afternoon in Romans chapter 1. And uh, let's start at verse 16. Here's the Apostle Paul in Rome in verse 15. He says, he says, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you uh, that, that are at Rome also. And verse 16, he says, for I am not ashamed. Let's read verse 16 together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, this is a, this is a, a radical statement. Now, I want you to look at the word gospel. Now, in the original Greek, this word, it was just very seldom used because of what it really meant. We know that the gospel is good news, amen? But it goes a little further than that when you study in the Greek. It is the almost too good to be true news. And the reason why I bring it up is because it wasn't used very much because what was it in those days and times that was almost too good to be true? So when the word gospel was used, it was the almost too good to be true news. Now think about it. What is it that's almost too good to be true? The gospel, the almost too good to be true news. Nearly too good to be true. It wasn't a whole lot of things in Paul's day that was nearly too good to be true. 
But Paul said it was that he was not ashamed of the gospel. And why? He makes it plain here. He says, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Now, let's just milk this just for a moment. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, salvation, or the Greek word here, sozo, which not only means born again, but it means sozo, it means preservation, it means deliverance, it means soundness, it means prosperity, it means healing. It, it includes all of the finished works of, of, of Jesus Christ. And what he says here is the gospel is the power that will bring you to deliverance, preservation, soundness, born again, prosperity. So now if the gospel is that power, again, what is power? Power is the ability to get results. So the gospel is the ability to get results in where healing's concerned, deliverance is concerned, soundness is concerned, prosperity is concerned. The gospel is the power that will give you the results of those things. Wow. Do you guys see how he twisted that? Did you guys see the twisting? No, nothing about the soul. Nothing about your soul being saved. No. All about you. Me, 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 and my, and my, my pocketbook and my health. All that. Took biblical concepts and turned them into materialism. Exactly, exactly, uh, Joseph. Look, this is not the gospel. It's not the gospel. Period. It's, it's, it's so plain if you're watching and you're awake you can see that these are not gospel presentations they say something about jesus but they're not the gospel they say something that's in the bible and that but they're not gospel they even use the word gospel but they're not gospel and and here is where we need to move forward. Get back, get back.